Hello. Um, so first you need some Posca pens. I'm just going to go through the materials that I'm using, um, which include paint, acrylic paint, uh, brayers. I've got two sizes going. Um, Amsterdam acrylic is a new paint that I'm using. It's supposedly bolder and, well, better. Um, letter set uh, transfer letters are very hard to come by, so I managed to find some on eBay. Um, the picture you've just seen is the original versus the um, photocopy that I took. Um, I took a photocopy and I changed its contrast up a bit so it was darker. Uh, supposedly that works better, but we'll see. So the new gel plate, um, this is the first time I'm using this particular size. It's 16 by 20, so it's the biggest one, I think. And I'm just laying down some Amsterdam acrylic. Uh, looks like I'm going to need some more on that. <laughs> okay, so I just lay down my um, transfer, my drawing, well, the photocopy version. Pat it down gently with fingertip pressure. And as you can see, it's come up okay. <laughs> it's done better than I hoped it would do um, for the first try. Um, some of it's some of the line work and the detail is quite faded, as you can see. But don't worry about that. We'll get to that. There's ways around it. Uh, you see me doing some um, detail work, some texture work with bubble wrap and um, mosaic tiles that I used for a previous project a few years back. Um, I use these textures a lot in cyanotype work and stuff like that because they make some pretty nifty textures, especially when overlaid and on top of a gel plate. Uh, you can see me with Posca pens now, just so sort of showing you. Uh, just getting some brush work going here, um, trying to fill in the lines that are too faded to see on this video. Uh, you, as you can see, you can paint directly onto the gel plate, which is really cool um, it's a bit fiddly though because <laughs> you kind of have to hover so you're not resting your hand and arm in the paint even though it's dry at this point because it could still lift off uh, yeah I'm just filling that in um, don't water it down because if you water it down it's just going to um, skip over the gel plate and, and bead and it won't take very well um, but you don't want it too thick either, otherwise it'll take ages to dry and you want the layers to dry before you put the last layer on. So, so yeah, a bit more detail work there and the eyeball, <laughs> which is really difficult to do, um, especially since I was at arm's length practically away from the, the uh, plate. <laughs> and hovering. Uh, the lips, the moustache, the beard, the wrinkles. <laughs> Exciting work. Yeah, as you can see, I'm just taking small bits of acrylic out of the cap. Um, I'm not squid I'm not squeezing it out into a, into a palette. I'm not using large amounts of it. Just small amounts here and there. Just to uh, fill in the gaps of what hasn't um, transferred properly. Uh, it did transfer darker than you can see on, on the uh, video. Um, I don't know why it looks so um, like faded there. It actually worked there. Yeah, I'm, I'm using Posca pens now. Paint pens. Um, really good. Really um, opaque and bright. <laughs> And as you can see, it, it really does work well on the gel plate. You, you just paint directly onto them. Um, I've got the chisel tip. No, sorry, the bullet tip. Um, it's not the smallest one you can get. I think it's the medium size. And I'm using a sponge here to just kind of blend and distress some areas and also to um, spread the ink out that I put that I might have put too much on. So make make a few shadow shadow effects. I'm just sort of going with the floor here. Again, with the... Uh, see, see I'm, you'll notice I'm going back and forth with um, different stuff here because um, as I wait for a layer to dry, I can be doing other stuff like touching up the uh, paint pen work on the tattoo. 
or doing some detail work or some distressed work. I'm just leaving it now. You, you'll see <laughs> large gaps of time here. Uh, the video was actually 59 minutes long and I've sort of um, sped it up to around 18 minutes long. Uh, there was a lot of stuff, there was a lot of waiting in between. Uh, so I'd, I'd leave a layer, I'd wait 10 minutes, I'd come back, I'd do something else over the layer again, I'd wait 10 minutes. And then I'd come back to do something else with this. Right, these are the letter set transfer letters. They're very hard to come by, I, I can't find them on my Amazon. Um, I've had to get these from eBay. Um, very easy to use. I used to use them a lot at school um, years and years ago. I'm just putting a little, um, uh, you know, something wordy <laughs> on this scrap of paper because I want. I'm hoping it transfers to the gel plate. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's just as simple as scraping it with a bit of biro onto the paper. Uh, the the letters themselves are a little bit waxy. Uh, I think that's why they resist the paint, and that's why the um, the toner on the photocopier on, on the photocopied um, version of my drawing. I think that's why that resists as well because it's kind of shiny and waxy, and I don't know the science behind it. Um, I do know that it's very hit and miss if you use magazines, but. I seem to have a bit more success with the um, originals or the laser prints. Yeah, at some point this um, one of the letters didn't work because I think these are just so old now they've been in somebody's drawer and the weather of the, or the room temperatures got to them and they just refused to work so I've gone through about six M's with this. <laughs> so eventually I've just written it on with a ballpoint pen. Um, interesting thing about ballpoint pens with gel plates is if you uh, press on quite hard on onto onto a piece of paper and write something or draw something and give it a kind of embossed effect, it can transfer and resist the paint as well, which is um, really cool. <laughs> I'm not trying it on this video, though. I'll try it on a different one. Uh, so I'm just ripping it to shape there. Um, laying a little bit of paint down. You don't want too much for this. Uh, you, you want to kind of get it a bit translucent so you can see through to the white paper underneath the gel plate just a little bit. Again, fingertip pressure just gently and within about 10 seconds peel it back up. And it, it worked. Uh, some of it was a bit faded so I went in with the brush to bring that out a little bit more in a few areas I was really pleased with how this was going at this point um, I didn't expect the first one to, to, to do this well uh, going in with a sponge as you can see kind of distressing some I don't like sharp edges on stuff like this so I'm just uh, deducting some paint with a sponge at this point, the, the paint was drying very quickly, so I wasn't entirely successful with that. Yeah, and again, just wait for the that layer to dry. And at this point, you'll notice I'm not here. <laughs> I'm cleaning my brayers and making a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, because why not? Um, yeah, I'm laying down some more texture here, hoping it'll take some of that dry paint up a little bit because it was kind of blocky on that side. I'm going in with the pink Posca pen too and just making some I'm just making some marks here. Nothing inventive or or anything like that just making some marks. It's quite a bright pink. And I've used these before. I've experimented with them on gel gel prints before and they come up really well. And just some green Laying down some green. Very nice green, isn't it? <laughs> Getting a bit too excited about green. Okay, I'll finish that. Um, yeah, I'm just painting a, a bit, bit of a chunk of green in there because I want to use the uh, half tone 
stencil that I nicked from college uh, from the print room. I borrowed it. I can have it back. <laughs> uh, it just works really well with paint. So I'm just going in there and just um, making some more patterns. So after I lay down some texture, have a drink. Because uh, now we're waiting for that bit to dry, which doesn't take very long. Wait for about maybe five minutes, maybe ten minutes, depending on how thick you've put the paint on. And here I am, I'm just putting a bit of yellow, uh, not yellow, orange. <laughs> Uh, it's my favourite kind of orange as well. Um, I'm just layering that on. I'm really just experimenting here. I'm not really creating a final outcome. I'm just want to because this one was so successful. Um, it was a su successful um, transfer. So I just want to get anything in there that I can that I can just to um, experiment with it to help me with my final one. Uh, a bit of yellow. I'll just sort of go in there in the negative space over the green that I've just put on um, behind the black as well and create a bit of a border with it. Um, I'm waiting 10 minutes between each layer I put on here because it really wants to be completely dry and whilst I'm waiting for the layers to dry I'm cleaning the brayers because you really don't want a dirty brayer when you put down a new layer of paint. Um, uh, first of all, thing I forgot to mention is when you put down your initial layer of paint to do your transfer, it needs to be translucent, not transparent. Translucent so you can just kind of see that there's white behind the, there's, there's the white card behind the gel plate so you can sort of see through to the, um, what it's on. And also, it's really necessary that you put it on um, a white piece of paper. Otherwise, if you put it on a black surface or a dark surface, you're not going to see your line work at all. It's just going to be obscured. Okay. So, I'm laying down a bit more blue. Over the colours that I've already put down. And as you'll see, I'm using my brayer to do a bit of mark making there. This was just a in the moment decision that I made. I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I used a brayer to do a bit of mark making? Because <laughs> why not? Um, experimental. Yep. Wait for that to dry. Get another cup of tea. <laughs> and. Yeah, that should be dry now. And I'm going back in with a black Posca pen now because I decided to just go over a bit of the writing, a bit of the um, text that I put down and add a few more details. Just random shapes, random objects, random lines that don't mean anything. Um, I think at this point I was, I'd spent about an hour if you, in real time um, getting to this point. So you can spend a lot of time doing this, just directly um, working on the gel plate itself, because no matter because every every layer is going to come off with the final uh, layer that you put on. So th there's no rush at all. You just get in there, do your experiments, put your marks down. It's worth knowing as well, um, a lot of these techniques I did pick up from reading about gel plates and printmaking and mono prints as well. I was into mono prints before I'd even got a gel plate and a lot of stuff from YouTube. So it's kind of, of, a, of a compilation of, of what I like about gel printing and some, um, the, the uh, transferring of the magazine pages and the drawings. That's quite new to me is that. Um, but it's quite a bit impressed me that you could put a drawing on there too that you've worked on. I've actually done three versions of this drawing as well that I'm going to try and um, pull prints from. I'm just laying down the final layer um, which is just white acrylic paint. I'm not laying it on too thickly. Too thick is bad. 
I'm laying it down as quick as I can because as soon as you lay it down thin it starts to dry and as you can see there you can kind of see some of the drawing through the paint and you just put as much pressure as you can on there make sure you get every corner um, because you can have air bubbles the paint, the uh, the uh, page could uh, buckle I'm using uh, I think 150 no I think no 200 um, GSM uh, paper here cartridge paper uh, which is quite thick it won't tear when I peel it back up it won't get stuck to the gel plate and I've just dumped a few of my art books on top to kind of weigh it down and I'm leaving it for about 20 minutes 25 minutes actually um, so an important rule of thumb as well if you touch the paper that's directly on the gel plate if it's still quite cold that means it's still pretty wet underneath so that's a good indication that uh, I've picked up on and I've turned it over because it's been 25 minutes now this is easier and I suggest doing it this way rather than peeling the paper off the gel plate just peel the gel plate off the paper because then you'll be able to see what you're doing and with any luck it should all come off a bit of Posca paint on the gel plate not a problem that'll come straight off with a wipe and as you can see it worked well and a few before and after shots there a final one um, all the layers I've put on uh, have, have come through I've learnt a lot from this one print I'm really anxious to get back into this now I'm hoping that I have the same success if not better with the copies that I made of it and the other designs that I've made um, again laser print copies college um, printers college um, photocopies photocopies work really well sorry I can't get my words out and so just use them get as many copies as you like uh, the drawings themselves are a mix of oil pastel black oil pastel and wax crayon black wax crayon the reason for this is what I'd explained earlier is it's that kind of waxy shiny quality that gives it that resist against the black paint and I still don't quite understand it I'm, I'm kind of getting a picture of it now because I've done a few and I'm yeah I'm getting there <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting to understand how, why it works um, but yeah, as you can see, uh, this has worked really well. The letter set type um, that I got, the transfers, they worked well. Hi, this is part two of my gel printing experimentation thing. Okay, so the three pictures you've just seen, uh, they're my three main designs. Um, as you can see, each one varied. And this is the one that I've photocopied. I've upped the contrast, I've darkened the blacks. And I've also gone over it in wax crayon. Uh, so as with the first video, I'm laying down some black acrylic paint, followed my followed by my design. And as you can see, it works a lot better now with the inclusion of the crayon element. Uh, the lines look a, a lot more, well, a bit more darker um, on the plate transfer. And as you can see, in the moment I'm gonna attempt to clear up the uh, surrounding spaces of the plate because I really don't want that border and for that I'll be using some masking tape uh, but for the moment <laughs> I'm going to attempt to do a few stencils to accomplish some sort of um, full screen print uh, technique using the gel plate I'm using tracing paper for this um, just I'm, I'm just cutting out some um, just random shapes that I took from the uh, negative spaces around my drawing because I thought it'd be cool, a cool effect. And back to the gel plate. Um, just cleaning up the borders a bit with masking tape, which works so well, <laughs> as you can see. Satis very satisfying to do. And I don't run the risk of um, accidentally erasing uh, the line work off the transfer.
So once again, I'm I'm using the laser print, uh, the laser copier um, version of my design, not the original. Uh, I want to keep my originals intact where possible. And <clears throat> moving back to the uh, stencils, I'm just using my smaller gel plate here, my six by six gel plate as a kind of um, a screen print thing, a block. Laid out some blue and some gel medium. Gel medium very important, as I found out. Uh, just left that on there for a few minutes, not too long. And then lift it up, clean it off, move on to the next colour. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm <laughs> mixing a little bit of pink um, on that one. Bit of gel medium again. Smallest, smallest, smallest bit of gel medium. You don't need a lot. A little goes a long way. And once again, over the shape, over the stencil. Again, wash the plate. Now I'm moving on to the next colour. Now you'll notice I didn't use a gel medium on this. Uh, big mistake. Well, small mistake. As you can see, it didn't show up um, because the paint dries very quickly. So I'm trying again, adding the gel medium. And there you go, success. I'm using a low tack masking tape, very low tack, and very good for arts. It doesn't mark the paper or anything. It doesn't peel the paper off. Um, once again, as before, I'm using the Posca markers, the Posca pens with a chisel tip. Uh, I'm going to find out in this experiment that actually this size <laughs> is no good for what I wanted to use this for, which is to colour in the um, the larger negative spaces. Um, I really could have used the uh, larger chisel tip for those areas. Um, now I know that the um, the final pull print, the final proof, will be. You know, quite substantial. It'll bring up the the lines already transferred, but I really wanted to make those lines darker anyway, because at this point I'm I'm spending a lot of time on these prints, and I don't want to waste <laughs> waste opportunities. Um, so I just wanted to fill in some lines, um, and use a bit of dry brush technique, which is a technique when well, it's, it's what it implies um, when the paint is sort of scarce on the brush and you can still use it to make sort of the um, kind of chalky marks with the, what, what is on the brush. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but hopefully <laughs> someone knows what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that's, been, that's very good to um, emphasise contours, as you can see with the arms and the abs and the pectoral muscles. Um, I've also given the person a tattoo as well, because uh, these images are about um, how shallow um, things can be with people. Um, not to get too personal, my ex was always very critical of my weight. I've always struggled with my weight, and this was kind of my middle finger to my ex and to all those people out there who think, a rock hard set of abs is grounds for a decent relationship. It's not. <laughs> anyway, moving on from that personal bit of useless information. Um, I'm trying the masking tape um, technique here. I've completely abandoned this stencil idea. I thought the gel plate is too big. And there's probably little chance of me being able to line those areas up correctly with the, with the final print. So I just chucked that out of the window, um, and I'm just thought I'd just do a bit of freestyle shapes here with some masking tape. Um, as you can see, the the masking tape works okay, but with the gel plate being quite unstable and always sort of shifting with the tiniest amount of pressure, you can't really get sharp lines with them. 
you, the paint will always stray outside of the lines and under the masking tape. It doesn't really matter how sticky the masking tape is itself. Uh, it just won't take to the gel plate as well as I hoped it would. Um, I was able to use that though and it to my advantage and sort of create some uh, freestyle line work. Um, which was interesting. It's definitely not something I'd do again. Um, I'm smudging some some of the wet paint from the uh, Posca paint shapes out there for effect. Uh, almost as if the shapes are moving. And, and yeah, I, I wish I wish I'd have just kept it at that. Um, but what I do in the next stage, I just add some. Strange lines and odd. It was an odd creative choice <laughs> that I wasn't very happy with um, with the final print. Um, I wish I'd have just left it. But you know, th these things can be fixed. Yeah, I could always cut those bits of negative space out, and or I could just make a note of it and try again. Now that I know this technique works, um, once again, um, I'm going to remind you that I went over the laser print copy lines with a uh, wax black wax crayon uh because i know a black crayon resist black crayon and um oil pastel resist the paint um so i really wanted to cover my basis there and just because i don't like wasting paint i didn't want this to be a bit of a you know failure <laughs> so that that's why i did that and i'm glad i did because the lines came out much better and once again, um, when it's on the plate that you transfer, you want to do, you want to take no longer than ten seconds <clears throat> to sort of uh, pat that out with the lightest pressure and pay close attention to. I mean, you kind of have to guess because you can't really see through the plate and the paper of, of where you've drawn your design or, or where it's photocopied so just sort of apply pressure in the sort of central way and especially in this case where i've added once again i've added um letter set type uh transfers they came out well as uh, because i concentrated on those parts as well just sort of massage them a little bit in, in that particular area uh, to make sure the paint sort of works around the waxy um, texture of the type and the lines that I've done. Um, sorry, I've waffled on a bit. Hopefully, you can. Hopefully, that's a coherent explanation. Um, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. It's just a very bizarre choice to put these strange shapes in and I suppose I just wanted to see how far I could take the Posca pens um, how much area the paint could cover I found as I was colouring these these shapes in I couldn't really go over the area the same area twice without taking some of that paint off of the uh, the gel plate which is as you'll see by the end um, product it's um it looks okay but it's not um solid look I, I should have kept to my original um idea of using a smaller gel plate as a kind of um full screen printing uh, device because that would have given it a more consistent um uh a more consistent area of coverage <clears throat> yeah this took a while at this point I've, I'm, I'm about an hour into this design um, as I explained in my previous video I like to take my time with this especially when the transfer is working so well I want to put as much as I can on this um, because experimentation is important at this stage you know gel plate is is such a excellent tool for printmaking it's more interesting i think um it's less time consuming than some 
print making techniques I've tried because you can be a bit more precise with it and if you turn the plate over when it's when the paper's on top you can see how it will turn out um, so that's pretty cool so oh, this is taking a long time isn't it I really should have cut this part um, I'm just taking forever to block in these colours uh, I'm a really slow worker when I'm doing my studio stuff in the kitchen because uh, I like to sort of take my time and you're not against the clock or anything you just take your time you're not concerned about your time running out when you're at college or there's no distractions unless you count my dog who is a total distraction except maybe when he's sleeping which he is at this point is always in the kitchen with me <laughs> so yeah I thought I'd rework the tattoo design as well um, for some reason the tattoo line work that's on the um, original obviously it translates well to when it's been photocopied but it's not transferring well to the gel plate and this is the second time it's done that and I'm not quite sure what has happened um, I think maybe I haven't concentrated on that area enough when I've patted the thing down when it's on the gel plate or maybe it's in the area where I haven't put enough paint or it's dried too quickly. There's too many variables. <laughs> I don't like to overthink this sort of thing because um, usually I'm wrong. <laughs> um, so blocking in this area, um, I think I was already regretting this decision. I should have just blocked it in just a colour and just left the design out. Um, Yeah, just touch dry. Make sure it's touch dry as well. I mean, this the acrylic paint, it doesn't take a long time to dry, but the Posca pens take a tiny bit longer to dry. Um, and they can smudge quite easily. And also, I found that the Posca paint can also stain the gel plate. But it's not an issue. It can be cleaned right off. But it's it's the last thing that you'll find on the gel plate when you pull that final print is the um, ghost print of your Posca. <laughs> um, so as before, I was going to go with gel medium because I wanted a bit of a transparency in the final print. Um, but I really didn't want to. <laughs> I decided to just uh, forgo all that gel print nonsense and uh, uh, the gel medium crap and just pull the print with white acrylic. Uh, this paper is 200 GSM, it's quite thick cartridge paper and as you can see um, I'm going to just lay on my trusty art books, my Drew Struzan, my John Alvin and my Clive Barker art workbooks. So there you go, fantastic recommendations there for you. I flipped it over. As you can see, you can see what the print's going to look like before you take the plate off. Um, I left this on for about an hour. I completely forgot about it. I took my dog out for a walk, and I forgot, which is why it's a bit of a fight to get it off the paper. Um, but this method, I, I recommend the method of peeling the plate off the paper rather than peeling the paper off the plate, because then you don't ruin the paper. You can have unwanted creases and marks when you pull the paper off the plate which is going to make it look ugly. Um, some of the letters were a bit faded. I don't understand why because they did seem to come out well when I lifted the transfer. So I'm just going back in and I'm just going to add a couple more that have faded a little bit too much and they also add a bit of contrast because I think it's interesting that some letters look quite light, quite transparent, almost like they're kind of ghosting in and out of the image. And then I can just put one on which is just a flat black transfer of, of a letter. So, I mean, that, that that's worked really well. And these things work really well over dried acrylic paint, so... <laughs> Not that that's an important note, but... 
that's worth filing away in the uh, warehouse of uselessness. Um, again, I'm having problems with the M's on these things. Um, I got one good M out of this entire sheet, which is probably 20 years old, uh, worth of letters set here. Um, very faulty. So I've gone in again and I've just written that M in, which is a bit of a pain in the ass because I wanted it to look a little bit consistent in font. Um, I had, had gone in uh, sort of post-production on this one and just used a completely different transfer font M. So, and that looks better. I mean, it looks really cool with a different font. And this is the final piece. And as you can see, where I'm, the shapes look a bit weird. I don't like them. Um, I wish I'd have just stuck to my stencil work idea. Um, the line works fantastic. I got some great results with the dry brush technique, with the contours of the muscles and the arms. And it's a much better print than the first one, I think. it's. Um, I did much less um, application of the acrylic paint to make more line work on this as well. I just touched up a few areas, like I added big hair <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the contours and stuff like that. And yeah, this, this was quite another successful print. Um, the next one that I do, I'm going to completely omit those random Posca patterns. I'm just going to go with some textures. Uh, it's the first gel print I've made where I haven't actually put any um, found object textures and I kind of missed them at this point because I think they're really, really cool. I'm going to try for some um, half tones in the next one. I'm going to print off some half tones and see how how that works. Get a, a bit more of a comic book feel with that one. A bit more 2000 AD comics, if you're familiar with those British comics of ours. Um, and yeah, um, maybe I'll um, colour the torso in a bit as well with a bit of bit of skin tones. Um, or maybe I'll just leave it. Or maybe I'll, I'll add a few bit more text in areas that kind of have a bit more of a subliminal um, effect on it. But yeah, I mean, this is the second design. Um, I'm going to try a third, my third design.